Um, so now we welcome Professor Simone Severini, who is the Director of Quantum Computing at Amazon Web Services and a Professor of Physics at University College London. At AWS, he helped launch Amazon Bracket, the Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab and the AWS Centre for Quantum Computing at Caltech. So please, Simone, if you're ready, then uh, go ahead. Yes, I'm ready. So I will share the screen, right? Yeah, should be able okay. to see that. So just a second. Um, okay. Um, is it visible? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay, great. So, okay, thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Riz, for uh, for the kind introduction, and thanks to the organizers of of this meeting that gave me the opportunity to to speak today. Um, I will uh, tell you very briefly um, about. Um, what is happening in quantum computing at AWS. AWS is the company where I work. I am uh, in uh, Seattle and it's uh, 7.42 a.m. here. Um, so AWS um, is, is a company that um, gives customers access to um, the ability of using any, virtually any kind of uh, IT workload um, over the internet, and um, this includes storage, compute, uh, um, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, satellite, uh, anything that comes to your mind that is related to compute, uh, there's a good chance that uh, is accessible via AWS. And uh, one of the one of the uh, fundamental ideas of AWS is that he helped, uh, and he helps a lot of builders. Um, and companies to uh, to accelerate uh, the way they innovate, and uh, for quantum computing the perspective is is similar. Um, in quantum computing, we are doing currently three uh, parallel initiatives. One is called Amazon Bracket, which is a quantum computing service. It's a service that allows customers to access uh, quantum computers built today and as quantum computers um, evolve, um, fully integrated on the cloud. The second initiative is called Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab, which is a consulting business, a, a group of people that uh, have a PhD in uh, either quantum computing on, or areas related to compute, like uh, high performance compute or machine learning, and help customers better understanding when quantum computing could have potentially an impact in their business and most probably deep in the future. And the third initiative is um, a research and development organization. It's called the uh, AWS Center for Quantum Computing, which is physically in the campus of Caltech, where Caltech stands for California Institute of Technology, but is in collaboration with various um, universities in the US, including Stanford, Harvard, MIT, um, University of Chicago, and University of Maryland. So Amazon Bracket is um, a uh, AWS service. Users here on the left, customers can access via their uh, computer an environment that is integrated on the cloud. Um, and from this environment, I can access some simulators. So right now there is a Schrodinger simulator. So just for simulating state vectors, there is a simulator that uses tensor networks that allow us to, to push a little bit higher the number of, of qubits for certain specific states that can be simulated and then a simulator that allow portability of noise models. So if you want to study how, what quantum computer is actually doing, then you can create your own noise model and, and run it on this. And uh, right now we have um, three different types of um, uh, quantum hardware, some uh, ion traps machine built by IonQ, which is a startup in Maryland, um, some um, superconducting qubit machines built by Rigetti, a startup uh, in, uh, in Berkeley, California, and some annealers, quantum annealers by, by the wave. But this is um, a dynamical service in the sense that we will keep including uh, quantum computers as this technology is evolving. What is important to me is that these, is, um, these facilitate access to different types of technologies and people out there can, can compare them and can determine uh, by, by experimenting uh, where the state of the art of this field is. I feel that, as we know, is very, very young and, and requires a lot of uh, innovation and work, both from 
from academia and industry. This is integrated in the cloud, meaning that you can use classical resources and quantum resources. And so when I joined AWS, I didn't have a, a clear um, appreciation of what it means to build uh, an industry uh, project uh, uh, that, that needs to run at scale. And in built in bracket, I, I sort of started learning about this because if you want to have a cloud service that actually works and, and, uh, and it works as a cloud service should work, then you need to include all sorts of interesting things like uh, the, the security, so like key management services. You want to have identity and access management because maybe you have a single account and multiple people that are using the same account. Then you want to have storage and you have uh, orchestration of classical and quantum resources. Then you want to have all notification, metrics, dashboard, and so on. So what one sees, of course, is the tip of an iceberg and underneath there is a lot of engineering needs to be done in order to build something of this type. So this is the first initiative. And the goal of this initiative is really to try to have more people accessing different types of quantum computers and, and hopefully accelerate innovation in this space. There are some startups that are building on top of Amazon Bracket. For example, QCWare uh, in Palo Alto in, in the United States, QNCO in the Netherlands, um, QCI uh, on the East Coast of the United States, um, QNASIS in Japan, and so on. Now, just to mention a few that, that come to my mind. This is just a screenshot of the console of the service. So the second, uh, the second uh, um, initiative is an organization which is called Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. And as I mentioned before, it's just a consulting business that helps customers getting closer to quantum computing and try to understand what's going on in quantum computing. And maybe it's an opportunity also for auditing what they're doing today in compute and maybe rethink what they're doing and see whether there is some HPC um, specific uh, uh, approach that maybe is better than what they are using today or some machine learning approach. Because as we know, quantum computing is still pretty early and uh, what customers can do at this stage, unless they want to do research in quantum computing is attempt to uh, determine what is the trajectory of the technology and eventually if the technology could help some potential business cases. Uh, in Pasadena, instead, uh, we have a research center. We are actually building our own hardware. So this hardware is based on something which is called the hybrid electroacoustic qubits. And the project is run by, by um, two people. Uh, the hardware um, uh, is run by Oscar Painter, um, that, um, that was professor at Caltech and still has an affiliation at Caltech, but is full time at AWS. And the uh, algorithms and uh, uh, error correction team is run by, by Fernando Brandao, that also uh, was a professor at Caltech and, and now is, is full time at AWS. So this is just the, just the uh, picture of the first page of a paper that they published. Uh, uh, recently, and this paper describe um, one of the things that they are building in, in that lab. Um, it's a full stack um, lab, so they, they are looking at hardware design, they are looking at uh, fabricating stuff, um, they have a um, test and measurement team, which is actually in, in San Francisco, not, uh, not uh, um, in Pasadena. Um, as I said, they are looking at error correction because the idea is that, uh, as you know, NISC machines uh, are interesting machines, but there is still a lot of work to be done. By the way, John Presky, that is the person that coined this term NISC, now works part-time um, as, as an Amazon scholar, which is a kind of visiting scientist. Um, so he works one day a week uh, in our uh, facilities, um, while for the rest of the week he works at Caltech. Um, and on top, on top of this, of course, you want to have customers and researchers being able to, um, to access this hardware in the best possible way. And so um, we need to work also on what is the uh, programming frameworks and, um, and as I said, all the engineering needed in order to have a uh, functioning cloud service at scale. Now in our perspective, um, what the hardware that we build there is it's, it's interesting, but is uh, not more interesting than any other hardware that is on the service because we would really like to provide a window over the technology or quantum computing to customers out there. And so as, as we do for, for classical hardware, where we work with multiple companies, also we built our own chips like Graviton in France. Yeah, I'm not sure if you, if you um, have been exposed to any of this information before. So uh, AWS 
um, contains a lot of different type of hardware and uh, and also built uh, its own chips. So the idea is that in the long run, in quantum computing would be a similar uh, perspective. So this is just short a long term commitment. We are actually opening a new building in the Caltech campus uh, in August, where we lost some of our labs. Now uh, about jobs. Um, this is a page. I'm not sure if, if the uh, web address is re readable, but is www.amazon.jobs, uh, and you can simply uh, Google uh, AWS Quantum uh, Jobs, and you can find this page. Uh, right now there are 57 open jobs in um, various aspects of what we are doing. These three initiatives, in fact, so jobs related to programming and um, and engineering, um, which are mostly associated with um, Amazon Bracket, jobs more physics-y uh, on experimental physics and also uh, theoretical quantum computing that are closer to what people are doing in the AWS Center for Quantum Computing. And there are there's also jobs that are customer facing um, related to the uh, Amazon Quantum Solutions Lab. Mm, uh, I guess that uh, I have a total of 20 minutes. I wanted to, to be as quick as possible so that we have time for, for questions. Um, the, the organizers of this meeting um, also suggested me to say something about um, myself and what was my career trajectory. I wrote a slide here. We can either start um, a conversation now and I am happy to answer your questions uh, or I can tell you a little bit about, uh, about this. You please decide. So thanks, thanks for your attention. Thanks, Simone. That was great. It was a good uh, kind of fast track through all of the stuff that Amazon are doing, and it seems like you're doing a lot. So that's great. We um so we do have a few questions in the uh, Q and A. So one of the first questions is with regards to accessing AWS's quantum computing services. Sure. Someone has asked, can PhD student researchers get access to AWS quantum computing services at a reduced cost? Yeah. Okay. So this is this is service in general availability, so everyone can access it. There is um, uh, something which is called the um, uh, research credits. So you can apply for research credits and you can access it uh, for free for, for your research, uh, for your research uh, uh, work, let's say, or for, for testing, if you like. So I would, um, I would be, um, so if, if you don't, find a way to do that uh, straightforwardly, please just send me an email and, uh, and, uh, and I'll take care to link you to the people that can, uh, that can provide you access to the service. Great, thanks. So we have another question regarding um, the position of quantum security for AWS. So someone has asked if there's a goal of AWS to kind of, you know, consider cloud security via a quantum method. For yeah, AWS. so, yeah, so we, we, um, so we don't announce roadmaps usually, so we, we build something and then once it's built, we, we put it out there. Um, as you know, uh, information security is a very important topic. And uh, in the fullness of time, uh, I believe that would be important to uh, be sure that uh, anything that, um, um, that could be compromised by a quantum computer is, uh, is is secure. Now, AWS already implements post-quantum cryptography for something called transport layer security. So if you Google AWS uh, post-quantum, uh, you find some blog posts that explain exactly what is done. And, um, and this is a different team. Uh, so it's not, uh, so people that work in these areas are not in the quantum computer organization, are people that work in uh, key management services or, or uh, in, uh, in, uh, in security. By the way, Dan Simon, the, the person that uh, that invented the uh, Simon's algorithm in quantum computing is actually a member of that team, <laughs> so which, which is a different a different organization inside inside that place. Right. Thanks. Um, so there's another uh, another question. Sorry, regarding kind of where you take people uh, in their career for internships. So do you take people yeah. at HD level? Do they have to kind of go and work in academia? Yeah, um, so there is a, a, a broad internship program at AWS. Um, I don't know how many interns uh, are in our organization this summer, but I believe probably 
over 30. Um, so every year um, there is an advertisement coming out and these are centrally managed. Like these are managed uh, over, um, over all AWS. Um, I think that the, the, the vast majority of the interns are actually working uh, in relation to the, the stuff that we are doing in Pasadena. And uh, uh, I believe, uh, and thanks for this question because I actually activated something in my mind. I believe that some of the interns are going even to Cambridge in the UK where we do have some people there specifically. Um, uh, so the first person that, that, that started the group in Cambridge is Earl Campbell. Probably, probably you, you, you know him. And there is a chance that Earl is, is taking interns. Indeed, this summer already, and I'm not sure if he already took interns. So I would suggest in case to send him an email directly if you if you are interested in case to an internship in Cambridge with Earl and his team. Yeah, that's great. That's good to know. Um, so I guess we've got time for one final question, if that's okay with you, Simone. Um, sure. Someone's asked, what kind of roles are available in quantum computing, I guess, at AWS for software testers? Yeah. Um, so if you... If you consider building a cloud service, as I, as I was mentioning before, and to me it was, I don't want to say a shock to move from academia to industry. You know, I, I have an academic soul. So here I actually made visible this slide and, and you see most of my life I was, I was in academia. In fact, by the way, I did my PhD in Bristol um, and, uh, and I was at UCL until uh, uh, two years up to two years and seven months ago, right? And then I, and then I moved here to Seattle. And so the, the, the difference that I found is that um, here, so in academia, I, I was, at least in my experience, a bit more individualistic. And uh, even if sometimes you work in a team when you write a paper, but it's still, it's still a lot about yourself. Here, it's instead about a large organization that needs to work to build something complex. And, uh, and to build something complex at, at, the, at, at the industry level and to make it work, it requires a lot of different type of expertises. And uh, there is a number of people that work on the Amazon Bracket project that, um, that do things that are even not even minimally related to quantum computing, but they have to do with software, with system engineering, with uh, um, figuring out some, some specific uh, ways to, to design uh, something, um, understand what is the best programming language for doing X, uh, figuring out uh, where in the software stack uh, there is the need for, for, uh, for, for a specific tool, uh, connect uh, different services inside the because, because Amazon Bracket is, is clearly based on a lot of stuff that has been already built in AWS, right? We, we, we pivot on experience of 15 years experience in AWS and, and the fact that there are hundreds of services out there that we can use, for example, SageMaker, which is the, the AWS service for, for machine learning, which is a very broad service with a lot of functionalities. We use part of SageMaker for running Amazon Bracket. And so this to say that uh, we are running people that have an expertise in quantum computing, but we are running people that are good software engineers, that can do good design, people that can write documents, people that can uh, interface with customers and so on. So anything that comes to your mind, there is a good chance that we need someone with that skills. Right answer. I think uh, we're pretty much on time there. So um, there's no more questions in the Q&A for now, but I guess we can pass those on to you if we get some more, um, you know, in the meantime, if you're around. Um, and yeah, thanks again for getting up so early to give a talk. Really appreciate it. My ple my pleasure. Thanks a lot for the for the kind invitation. And as I said, I'm super uh, happy to answer any question, uh, not necessarily about uh, the work we have been doing at AWS, but uh, any career question and uh, uh, and share what I what I've learned so far and uh, and share I suppose even my. My, my failures and, and, and the traps that, that I guess one can find along the way uh, when growing, when, when moving from, from the PhD towards, towards what comes next. So thanks again. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you soon.